Welcome to my presentation, Foundations of Geometric Algebra Computing. My name is Dietmar Hildenbrand and I am a lecturer at the University of Technology, Darmstadt, Germany. That's what I would like to present to you first. I would like to present some basics of geometric algebra, especially focusing on the conformal geometric algebra, which is a specific five-dimensional algebra um, that we are focusing on in this talk. Then I would like to present some of our own geometric algebra applications, give you a geometric algebra example. And um, at the end, I would like to, to present some principle of our computing technology uh, resulting in code for a standard programming languages. So what is the goal of geometric algebra? Geometric algebra in principle is a mathematical language which is very close to the geometric intuition. So for instance, it is very easy to deal with objects like spheres, circles, planes, and so on, and intersect them, project them, transform them, and, and so on, and we will see some um, examples later on. Let us come to the specific conformal geometric algebra. How is it based on? It is based on five basis vectors, E1, E2, E3 are describing the well-known Euclidean coordinate axis x, y, and z. E0 um, and E infinity are two additional basis vectors with a geometric meaning. E0 means origin and E infinity means the point at infinity. These five basis vectors are not all the elements, all the basis elements of conformal geometric algebra, because geometric algebra consists also of um, all the combinations of the basis vectors uh, with the outer product as basis elements. So we also have the scalar as part of, of uh, conformal geometric algebra, which is a great zero element. The basis vectors are grade one elements and we also have the combinations of two, three, four and five basis vectors to um, also basis elements means at the end we have two to the power of five basis elements means 32 basis elements. This is on one side a lot, but on the other side we will see that um, all these basis elements have specific meanings for geometric objects, for transformations and so on. And for instance, uh, vectors or linear combinations of the, the basis vectors describe geometric objects such as point, sphere, and plane. Then um, linear combinations of the outer products of two basis vectors called bivectors describe geometric objects such as circle and, and lines. And for instance, the linear combination of the red indicated um, scalar and red indicated um, uh, basis plates E1 wedge E2 and so on, they describe in principle quaternions, means E1 wedge E2, E1 wedge E3, E2 wedge E3, they describe the complex uh, units of quaternions and additionally uh, the scalar um, can be used for computing um, with quaternions inside of conformal geometric algebra. Means what we are normally doing with uh, transformation 
matrices in, in linear algebra can be done inside of the algebra in conformal geometric algebra. 3D points have to be embedded in this five-dimensional geometric algebra. And here we can see the formula for this embedding of a point. Um, the bold X is the 3D vector um, using the E1, E2 and um, E3 basis vectors. And then um, we have to add half of the scalar product of this x times e infinity plus e zero. Having this definition of a point, it is very easy to define spheres. We have to take the point p as the center point of the sphere and subtract half radius squared times e infinity and that's the definition of a sphere with center point P and radius R. And what we can see here is that a point in principle is a specific sphere with zero radius. Here we can see this sphere with center point P and some radius R. And if we move the center point P to infinity and adapt the radius accordingly, at the end in this limit uh, process, uh, the blue plane in principle um, can be described, means in conformal geometric algebra, the plane is a specific sphere with infinite uh, radius. And um, if we look at um, the algebraic expression of, of a plane, then we can see that it consists of the normal vector n plus the distance d uh, to the origin times e infinity. Intersections of geometric objects can be handled very easy in conformal geometric algebra. For instance, if we have two spheres A and B, simply the outer product A wedge B of these two spheres describes the intersection of the spheres, means A wedge B represents the intersecting circle. This is also true for other geometric objects. For instance, if S1 is a sphere and L is a line, then the outer product S1 wedge L describes the intersection of line and sphere. And since um, a line is intersecting a sphere in two points, the resulting um, geometric object is a so-called point pair, which is also part of the geometric objects of conformal geometric algebra. We already realized that circles can be defined as the intersection of two spheres, but there is also another possibility. If we have three points, A, B and C, the outer product of a wedge B wedge C describes the circle going through these three points. And lines are specific circles in conformal geometric algebra. So if we um, move one of the points, for instance, C uh, to infinity, then the result is a line going through A and B and infinity means the line can be described as the outer product A wedge B wedge E infinity. Taking this just computed line L as a rotation axis and use additionally a rotation angle, then we can simply define a 
so-called rotor in conformal geometric algebra as e to the power of minus half of the rotation angle times the rotation axis. And if we uh, go into the details of this expression, we see that in principle quaternions are described. Quaternions means rotations um, with a rotation axis going through the origin. But in conformal geometric algebra, this rotation axis doesn't have to go through the origin. It can be an arbitrary line. And this is then in principle describing a rotation about an arbitrary axis. And in mathematics, this is also known as dual quaternions. There's also an inner product available. And A dot B with A and B being 3D vectors simply describe the well-known scalar product. The one formula A dot B can also be used for the description of distances depending on um, what kind of geometric um, algebra A and B are. So for instance, if A and B are points, then A dot B describes the distance of the two points. If A and B are point and plane, then A dot B describes the distance between point and plane. And if one is a point and, and one is a sphere, the expression A dot B can describe whether a point is inside or outside of a sphere, depending on the sign of the result. If the result is zero, then we know that the point is on the sphere. If we look at this expression in more detail, we can um, realize um, that if we are considering the tangent line of the sphere going through the point and consider the um, line segment between the point and the, the touching point of the sphere, then in principle the outer product of point and sphere describes the length of the line segment from P to the touching point. The inner product A dot B can also be used in order to describe angles. If A and B are two lines, two planes or two circles, the cosine of the angle between them is described simply with A dot B. These examples show that it is very easy to calculate with geometric objects and transformations in conformal geometric algebra. And some properties are geometric intuitiveness, simplicity and compactness of the expressions. Another very important property of conformal geometric algebra is that it unifies many mathematical systems. So for instance, linear algebra, quaternions and dual quaternions, and also complex number of Blücher coordinates, uh, which are used for the handling of arbitrary lines. So what are our own applications with geometric algebra? For instance, we uh, developed a robot kinematics for a football playing a robot based on geometric algebra. In um, principle, we um, developed inverse kinematics for the um, legs of the robot and described that in, in geometric algebra and got really results concerning performance. 
Another application of us is dealing with computer animation, uh, virtual reality. So we developed the kinematics of the arms of virtual characters using um, geometric algebra and also got really good results. Another application is the approximation of geometric objects to point clouds of laser scans. Or the application of a finite element solver. In this case, we could benefit from the compact expressions for velocities and forces, combining rotational and linear parts of conformal geometric algebra. Together with the High Performance Computing Center in Stuttgart, Germany, we extended a molecular dynamics uh, simulation based on geometric algebra. And the nice result was that on one side, the simulation was faster with this extension and it was much more robust than the, uh, the previous uh, solution, which was a big surprise for us. Let's come to an example now. Some years ago, when I was standing at the beach, <laughs> I was wondering uh, what the mathematical description of the horizon circle is, de depending on my observer point P and the Earth S. Means my question was, having the point P, the observer point, and the sphere S, how can I compute the horizon circle C? In order to solve this, the main question is, which sphere intersects with the sphere S at the horizon circle? This is the sphere K with center point P and radius such that it touches S. And what is the radius of K then? The radius of the sphere K can be described with this bold uh, line segment. And as we remember, the length of this line segment can in principle be described based of on the um, inner product of the sphere and the point. And if we look at the detail, uh, the square of the length of this line segment um, is defined based on minus two times the inner product of sphere and point P. And how can we describe the sphere K then? As we remember, a sphere can be uh, described based on the center point minus half of radius square times e infinity. And in our case, this means k is equal to p plus inner product of sphere and point times e infinity. Knowing this, how is the formula for the horizon circle C then? C is the intersection of the two spheres S and K, which can be expressed as S wedge K. And knowing the formula for the sphere K, C equals to S wedge P plus in a product S and P times E infinity. This means we are simply able to describe the horizon circle C with this formula based on uh, the sphere S and the observer point P. The way to um, develop this formula was very geometrically intuitive and the formula is very compact.
And what about the role of the coordinates? Until now, we didn't have to consider coordinate systems or some, some coordinates. Um, only if we would like to compute a specific circle, we have to consider some uh, coordinates. So far, we saw many advantages of geometric algebra. And the question is, how can we support the widespread use of geometric algebra in industry? And this can be done uh, by making it accessible for as many people as possible and as many applications as possible means we have to provide a suitable computing technology supporting many programming languages. So what are the goals of our geometric algebra computing technology? We developed GALOP. This is short for Geometric Algebra Algorithms Optimizer, a software which is downloadable from the GALOP webpage. And one goal is the easy development process using uh, intuitive and compact descriptions based on geometric algebra, which are leading to reduction in development time and better maintainability. And um, we would like to integrate uh, our technology into standard programming languages. And another goal is high performance and robustness of the implementations. Our proof of concept application was the already mentioned computer animation application where we uh, describe the movement of the arms of virtual characters based on geometric algebra. Uh, one interesting result was that um, the algorithm was very compact with, with geometric algebra, we, we say about 30%. Um, and the first implementation, okay, it, it was 50 times lower than the conventional implementation, but after our optimizations, it was three times faster than the conventional implementation. And this uh, result could be uh, shown at the Eurographics Conference 2006, um, based on the paper Competitive Runtime Performance for Inverse Kinematics Algorithms Using Conformal Geometric Algebra. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, this was the first geometric algebra implementation, which was faster than the conventional implementation. This shows the architecture of GALOP. As input, we have our geometric algebra algorithm. After an optimization approach, we have an intermediate layer for the intermediate uh, representation. And from this intermediate representation, we can derive solutions code for sequential platforms as well as for parallel platforms. Examples for uh, sequential platforms are the generation of C++ and Java code, and for parallel platforms, uh, for instance, OpenCL, CUDA, or FPGA code. With our web-based GALOP called GALOP Web, for instance, we have the possibility to generate C++, Python, MATLAB, Mathematica, Julia, Rust, and Lattice code. Let's now optimize our horizon example with GALOP. GALOP, in principle, takes a geometric algebra algorithm described by GALOP script and generates optimized code in one programming language. The GALOP script in, in this case consists of five statements. First, the point P is computed based on the variables Px, Py, and Pz. 
then we compute um, the center point of the Earth called M as the origin. It is just a simplification. Then we compute the sphere S as the center point M minus half times the radius square uh, times e infinity. And then we use our um, expression for the sphere K, P plus P dot S times e infinity. And at the end compute our intersection circle, our horizon circle as the outer product or the intersection of S and K. And the question mark in front of uh, C means that from these five uh, statements or the computation of these five multivectors, we are at the end only interested in the computation of the horizon circle C. Means uh, we have three variables Px, Py, Pz and R. And here we can see the resulting C code for this multivector C. And uh, in principle, all the multivectors are defined as uh, 32 dimensional arrays with optimized um, computations. For all the needed coefficients, since in this example we only need seven. Uh, coefficients, all the others are zero. All computations are based on the variables px, py, pz and r. And if we look at the computation, we see they are very simple, only very simple arithmetic operations. And these simple operations lead to high runtime performance and robust implementations, which is a principle of Gallup. As a conclusion, we could see that on one side, working with geometric algebra is geometrically very intuitive. And on the other side, using Gallup or Gallup Web, this is leading to fast and robust implementations. The reference to this presentation is my book, Foundations of Geometric Algebra Computing. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thanks.